Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Kalahari High School event, checking in with 20164X Sharks, an absolutely phenomenal team that designed award earlier, but this is only their third event, and you really got to take a look at some really cool things on this robot. What really caught my eye, they have an absolutely unique intake uh, that I have not seen amongst other robots before, some cool sensors that go into it, but we're going to be doing a full journey through this as well, too, some different PTOs, uh, great catapult as well, too, and some other great functions. Let's learn more about the scene coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Carlos, let's start off with your drive base. I noticed when you're on the field, you're just able to zip around so well. You got a lot of motors put into your drive, so break down this uh, motor config, and then we'll kind of work our way through the robot. So we have six motors on our uh, drive, and we have uh, five wheels on each side. They're uh, 2.75 inch wheels, and we have four omni wheels and one traction wheel in the middle. And we also have uh, 36 tooth gears for our drive right here. And um, we have uh, 600 RPM motors on our on our drive, and then for our PTO on the back right here, we can switch. But we can switch to eight motors on our base by moving this 36 tooth gear, and then this we have two motors right here, and they're 200 RPM motors. But when we move the gear, it turn it gears it to a three to one and it turns it into a 600 RPM motor, which makes us go faster. I don't think I've talked to a team yet that's done an eight motor drive uh, quite right. And I know the PTO really helps compensate you know, with your catapult and that sort of thing too, but when you're looking at it from a design perspective, what made you really want to say, hey, we're gonna go eight motors on this and go that route? Um, I think helping us get away from defense is really good yeah. using eight motors. Yeah, I think it just helps us move around the field a lot faster and more efficiently. It's more focus on offense throughout the match, that sort yes. of thing? Totally makes sense on that. Jenna, we mentioned a little bit about the catapult, but let's add in a bit more into what's going on uh, for that. So walk me through some other features of it. Yeah, so our catapult is run by these two 200 RPM motors, um, again, with the PTO. Right now it's in the eight motor drive mode, and then when we activate the PTO into the catapult mode, we have a geared, um, a torque increase by about eight and a half, and a speed reduction by about one and a half, because the catapult doesn't make a full turn. It's about... I think we calculated it's about like 0.15 of a full rotation because of the amount of teeth we have cut off of our 12 tooth gear. So it runs at about um, two shots a second, which is fairly fast. And our match loaders sometimes can't keep up with it. I was going to ask, but yeah. we're still learning. As it is a pretty new design, we still have a lot we're working on with it. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention about along our drive base is we have these uh, spinning 36 tooth gears. We call them like wall riders. They help us with navigating around the field because like Carlos said, we're really fast. We really want to focus on being fast so that we can get away from defense. With our uh, claw, these can, these Lexan um, like reaching out can sometimes get stuck on the wall. So the riders help us go along the wall without getting stuck with it. And that's, I mean, such an easy thing to add on yeah. to, to a robot as well too. Is that something that you've seen a lot of success from? Would you recommend that to other teams? Yeah, we have seen it before in videos like of people revealing the robot. It's definitely something I would recommend. It has helped me tremendously with navigating around the field, especially underneath that elevation bar to not get stuck on the walls. Like I said, it helps with bowling, which is the strategy people are using by match loading a bunch of balls and then pushing them around and onto the goal. That's something, it's very easy, like you said, to add on. It took us five minutes. Yeah. The time that spent most was trying to find them, actually. And then we just put them on. One thing I want to ask you, you mentioned with your catapult, you're doing two shots a second. Uh, Match-wise, I get that you have to do some compensating for that with your loaders, but how far from skills-wise, uh, are you adjusting that speed when you're doing skills, or are you still trying to just shoot as quickly as possible? Yeah, so a few days ago, we started practicing with our skills, and so we have decided that after getting used to the match loading, we decided we want to keep it as fast as possible so that, especially for the autonomous, we have enough time to get all the way around and use our wings to push all those balls in. So we're really utilizing the speed as much as we can. We don't want to decrease it at all at the moment. Ron, let's talk about the uh, Auton arm. Uh, lots more still covered on this robot, but talk about that a little bit. And uh, when did you implement it on this robot? 
Um, so for our autonomous arm, we have this in the back, which helps us de-score the try ball in the match loading zone. And this helps us get our auton win point. Um, it's very reliable. We've had many success with it. And I think everyone should add it onto their robot. Um, and then for our end game, we have a one piston end game, which helps um, us hang and it also helps us our side hang. Um, we have a passive horizontal bar hang. Um, we're able to slide right up onto the bar and it hangs. We get an A tier hang on both hangs. Right here, we have a standoff which helps us, which starts back with tension. And right when our end game releases, the standoff pops out which helps us ride along the barrier and just hold on to the bar. Yeah, and you were, I watched your last match. I mean, at, at first it, you were kind of had your teammate in the way, and you were able to just readjust and climb with less than two seconds left. So it was really cool to see that in, in implementation working so well. And then a big thing about our robot design is our claw. We have a one piston claw, and we chose to have a piston claw because we had we were using all eight of our motors, and we wanted to keep this robot fairly simple. So we have one piston right here, and we have we used 45 degree gussets to help close the claw. And we use Lexan just to help grab the tribe a little bit. Yeah, and one of the other things too I noticed, it looks like you're using some sort of sensor in that because when I saw you doing those match loads, uh, you were just, uh, it was so smooth. I love that process of you. So uh, what are you using, Jenna, in regards to uh, sensors on this? Yeah, so because we're not using a roller intake, it's harder for us to kind of aim to get to the balls where we like to get to the balls and grab them without really just having a lot of leeway for where we're facing because the claw has to it has to come right to the center of the claw and then it will close. So to help our driver and to help with, well, I'm the driver, to help with driving and to help with autonomous, we have a distance sensor that we set up to close when, it, when there is any object that's close enough, which will be a tri ball, to close when it is close enough. And so that is what we were using in our first match a lot. Um, we turned on the sensor. And when I go up to the match load bar, they just have to set it in and the claw will grab it and then I just back away, that's all I have to do. And then I'll just release it and then turn on the sensor again when I get away from the ball so it doesn't grab it again. I think adding on to that too, um, great for the match load area, but it really, really effective, I think, when you're just picking up tri balls from the field as well too, because when you have that claw design, you potentially risk the double possession and having that where it closes right away, I think it's been very effective for your team, which is really cool. Yeah, absolutely, it does definitely help with that. Well, uh, 20164X, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, by the way, shout out to Hannah, who's not here uh, right now with their team, but definitely here in spirit as well. But can't wait to see how this robot does in the field. Good luck the rest of the way, and thanks for showcasing your robot. We appreciate it. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.